Okay, in my previous video, I had one that was 25 minutes long instead of 6 minutes long, and we were trying to rebuild indexes on a, uh, rebuild all the indexes on tables in a database. So this database right here, each of these tables has various indexes. Um, let me just show you really quickly. Those are the index name, the schema name, and the table name. Okay. Well, the video went 25 minutes because uh, I showed kind of how to get to all of uh, all of these data, and then of course we you know, built a table, tried to explain the syntax. So instead of doing that, because that's going to turn out to be 25 minutes, I'm going to assume you know how to get the index name, schema name, and the table name. Um, you can explore these various system objects here, and you can find out how to get that. And I'm also going to assume here in this video that you know how to do a variable table. I'm not going to go over that other part because it's going to take 25 minutes to go over that and it's too long. The goal, the purpose of this is to build an administrative job that rebuilds all the indexes in all the tables in a database. So every index in, for every table in an index, uh, in a database. And so um, there's multiple ways that you can approach this problem. That was for the other one. Um, the way that I choose to approach this problem is with a while loop. And so I'm going to build a while loop that loops through every table. And while it's looping, I'm not every table, every index. And while it's looping through each index, it's rebuilding each index. So the very basis of a loop is going to be the begin and the max point. So I'm going to declare begin as an integer and set it equal to 1. And I'm going to declare the max as an int. OK, and so that's another thing while I'm on the select star from rebuild index. I want to show you what we have currently stored in this table. Um, what in the world? OK, so in this table, and like I said, you can look at the table and figure out kind of what the logic is behind it. We have an index ID, which is an automatic identity field that increments by 1 and starts at 1. We have the index name, we have the table schema, and we have the table name. When you look at rebuilding an index, it's basically just an author index statement. And what it needs is it needs, first of all, the index name, the table schema, and then the table name. And so the index ID is the main purpose is for our loop, because the very first part we're going to do when we're declaring variables is we're going to declare our max variable equal to the max index ID value from rebuild index. So in this case it's 8, but it could be anything. The next thing we want to do is we want to declare three other variables, and we want to declare an index name variable with a var car of 100 to match the table above. Okay, now block is off. Uh, we want to declare a table table schema, which is a var car 50. And we want to declare a table name as a var car 100. And the purpose of these, for instance, is while the loop is going on, um, these are going to take the value of index name, table schema, and table name wherever the index ID is at the loop. The begin is essentially the very start of the loop, of course, but this value is constantly going to be going up by um, 1. So the basis of, or the basics of a loop is you have a value while a value is less than or equal to or it could be is greater than well no um, you are going to do things while that is true so begin is less than max right begin starts at one it's less than max so that's true so while that's happening um, while begin is less than max or less than or equal to max it's going to do things at the very end of a loop usually you will set the value of begin equal to begin plus whatever the increment value is, which in this case is 1, because you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 in the, the rebuild index table. That's what we're going to increment it by is 1. So that 
is that's kind of just loop basics right there. It's kind of just logical loop basics. <clears throat> okay, so we have our table that we're going to be referring to, the rebuild index variable table, that we're going to be referring to when we're rebuilding all the indexes. So, uh, and then we have our variables declared that are equal to these values. So let's, what we want to do now is we want to set these index name values equal to what they're going to be while the loop is going on. Okay. And I'll explain the logic of this, but this is going to be almost um, identical. I'm going to try to avoid so much copy and paste. Anyway, I have such a limited time, I keep forgetting I can't go over a certain amount of minutes. Okay, so I'm trying to do this fairly fast. All right, so when the value of index ID, so what we've done, we've set begin, so begin is on one, let's say, is less than or equal to max, it's gonna start the loop. What it's gonna do is it's gonna select the index name, this value, the table name, the table schema, and the table name, all of these variables that we've declared here, equal to these values in the table where the index ID, where this value is equal to begin. So if begin is one, then it's gonna grab the index name, the table schema, and the table name. Um, for instance, ix sentiment date dbo private two, because begin is one. If begin was two, it would grab these values. Okay, and that is important because the very next step we're going to do is we're going to declare our dynamic SQL here. And the way that I uh, will get dynamic SQL in this case, oh man, I did not just do that, um, is I'm going to rebuild all the indexes, right click on the indexes of just one table, rebuild all, and hit the button script or hit the uh, option script, I should say. And I'll go ahead and just delete that and delete that. Hold on, I think. So we have this nice little alter index statement. And this is, this rebuilds indexes. That's all the statement does. It rebuilds whatever that index is. But you'll notice in the syntax, we have the index name, we have the schema name, and we have a table name, which we have index name, table schema and table name okay so notice what I did there notice what I did there and notice what I did there okay so for those of you who are familiar with SQL Server and again if you're not um, go ahead and, and look up some information on it because uh, what I just did there is I can pass in these values that I've created above so this is what this is what's going to be dynamic. This is what needs to change. That's what we mean by dynamic SQL. This these are the values that are going to change. So the index name was first. We know that the schema name was next, so or the table schema. And then we know that it was the table name. So for those of you again familiar with dynamic SQL, um, copy and paste the um, uh, whatever the the code that you're trying to use, reuse, and then you can use the single quotes to basically pass in your um, your uh, parameters, basically. Um, so that's what these are, essentially. So, that's that. Next part to Dynamic SQL, for those of you who are experienced, is to actually execute the SQL statement. So we have to execute it. We've declared it, we've set it, now we have to execute it. Will, it will complete this statement. And then, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print, and I don't have to do this, but I'm going to choose to print certain values. Oh, it's going to be plus. And I'm going to say index rebuilt. Uh, well, no, I'll say index, and then let's do index name. Index name. 
rebuilt for, and then end it with table name. Okay. All right. So, again, let's review. This right here and the above, you can do your research. You can look at what's going on up here. Um, but for the most part, um, this I'm highlighting this. Uh, for the most part, uh, I'm not going to explain because it would take too long. Um, but what we were doing here is in this select statement, we're getting the index name, the table scheme, and the table name from system tables. Um, we're declaring a rebuild index with certain fields that are basically going to be, uh, or that are that are in existence with this select statement. The only thing we added is the index ID, which is an identity field. That identi identity field is useful for um, the values here. And then what I would like to do really quickly is to let test my code begin max uh, index name table schema and table name and since I'm using SQL Server Express I mean you can use jobs and such and that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that but in SQL Server Express there are no jobs or at least not the edition that I'm using because uh, I'm doing 2008 R2 so Basically, this is part of a stored procedure that I use for each of my databases that's called, and it does various tasks. And this is one of the tasks, as you see, step one, which is um, rebuild non-system indexes. Okay, and so the while loop there, so all of that works up to here. So if any of the code breaks, it's going to be within this loop. Um, and it didn't break, so all the indexes are rebuilt for that table, just eight of them, as you can see. So that is uh, a quick example of how you can rebuild all the indexes for all the tables in a database um, dynamically. It's just one way of doing it. Like I said, there's multiple ways of doing this.